Today, we're going to be talking to Joe Meyer, a retired facility director for a chain of senior care homes in British Columbia, Canada. And we're going to find out how he gained some efficiencies by using maintenance care. You and me, we've known each other now for a while. And one of the things that I think that would be interesting for people to hear uh, is a bit about how we met, you know, and kind of your perspective on how we met, because I know my perspective, I was trying to sell you a software and, um, you know, I, I was, you were just a guy on the other line at first. I was calling all the time and, uh, <laughs> trying to get you to buy maintenance care. And, and then, um, and then we kind of, um, met up once you started to, to kind of consider the software and, you know, what was your experience like, you know, in that beginning times, uh, as I was calling you all the time. I think it was uh, it was kind of interesting because I'd never really worked with anything like this before. So um, when uh, when when we were talking and I was talking to some other companies, it was just it was really fact gathering. It was just getting all the, all getting all the information from everybody, and you no, know, not not only the cost, but also just how's it going to work? How what does it actually mean to ha to to switch over to our to our the guys that were in the company? Are they going to be able to work with this? Actually, it all sounded really good. Every company sounded good, but you know, I've, I've said that before. Nobody's going to sell you anything bad. You know, they're going to try and sell you. You know, they're all they show all the good stuff. Right, right. So, um, I guess you know, after a few months of back and forth, I think we decided to um, to just try it out on I think one or two of our sites and just to see how it goes, and um, it made a significant difference because well, we chose specific sites that were excited about getting on the phones and doing that part of it. There was some sites that we knew we were going to get a little bit of pushback and some sites at first we thought, well, is it going to actually work? We don't have that much staff on those sites. So, I mean, you, yeah, you and I went back and forth, you know, for a long, long time. And um, when we did those initial tests, I think we, um, we saw some definitely some, some positive things, but it was so new that we were, we were all walking blind kind of at the beginning. And yeah. What year was that? That must've been like 2010 around or a bit laughter around that time. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. It, it was, it was just a few years after I just started working with, um, with the organization Yeah, and, um, and we were definitely trying to move into this, you know, we, we recognize that, you know, ha getting people to phone the maintenance guys or walking down the hall, giving them a piece of paper or it, half the time is being spent on that communication instead of them just being able to get it on a phone and to be able to uh, just basically go from site thing to thing to thing without having to chat so much with people and waste a lot of time because it, it this doesn't work well. And we never knew if things got done at the end and they didn't know because it was like, there's just too much. So this gave it some order and, uh, and, and even order of what, what's important. What's the number one priority here today and what's going on and things like that. Instead of, you know, working on something and having three emails come in while you're fixing something or, or having three people jump at you and, uh, and phone you, then, then all of a sudden there was a problem. So, you know, yeah. you didn't get anything done. So I remember like once you, you started, um, like I flew down to, uh, to BC and, uh, kind of, we did a road trip of all yeah. your locations and started onboarding them. And we had a blast during that road trip. I think it was like a week long or so and got to visit. It was a good experience for me too, because we were starting out with bigger companies like yours and, and, um, and so seeing what that process was like, I know you had some challenges, even with, like you said, with certain certain personalities, certain people that were computer friendly or open to the idea. It just seemed like big brother watching that type of situation. And, and you know, the way you handled that, like, do you remember some of what that was like and some of the obstacles maybe we face and how you handled those? Yeah, I think that was exactly what you're saying. There was a few, there's a few people that were definitely looking at it like that. Oh, you're just going to check my time and this and that. And um, we just tried to convince them and say, look, like this is totally not what we're doing. And, you know, just like any salesman can tell you, this is not what we're doing. I always say to them, well, let's let's talk about this two or three months down the road and let's see how that's went. And that's kind of how we looked at it. We said, look, let's see if this works because it has to work for you. If it's not going to work for the people that are on the site, what's the use of getting it? So um, we got feedback after two or three months and, um, and, and they were they were like, 
yeah, this is a lot different than what we thought. At first, it was difficult because they were doing everything the old way and then having to switch over. There's always going to be that learning curve. Um, but once we got it going, they were like, oh, yeah. And the other thing is, is when you have like as many sites as we have, there's no way I'd be sitting at my desk all day just looking at the computer. And that was just not my job. My yeah. job was just that this. I know when things are getting done with the if when I get not that many calls, when I don't have that many problems on my plate. And that was definitely going down. And um, so those things all changed in, in, in about, three, about three months, I would say. Some sites, we had different challenges. We had challenges like we don't have that many employees on the site. Now, right. now I had guys saying, well, hey, um, I get a call, and then I got to enter this thing into the computer, and then I got to go fix it. What, how does that work? And uh, so we had to come up with things like that where we put some uh, um, like iPads in certain areas where residents could actually – um, use that iPad in a common area instead of maybe, oh, I can't find the guy to tell him anything. And they would type it in and he would get it. Or even the link that they would, if people had computers in their residences, they could go right onto the link without doing anything else, just type it in and um, and know that he would be getting it. So there was some different challenges for sure. Um, and some lasted more than three months. Some took a little bit longer. But I mean, I know today that um, there's, there was maybe 20 sites then there's probably over 30 now and i know that it's still working there and it's working well and every site that's added now um they're putting maintenance care in there so it obviously it's held the test of time yeah and it, it's definitely it does so much more at the beginning it was just communication um but when you get into budgeting and all that other stuff well you know more than me about that kind of stuff it just helped so much so yeah yeah no it, it, what i found what i learned was how you can't, you know, especially in those days, because computers were kind of brand brand new for the maintenance departments, right? Like it wasn't a known thing for maintenance people to use computers back then as much. And um, and the way you handled that wasn't like, you're doing this and this is the way we're doing it. Like it was a conversation and it was, I think that helped a lot because the, the people at the, at the homes really felt like you were there for their best interest and not so much just to make them do something because you didn't trust them or whatever it was. So I thought that that was good. And that's kind of, it's funny because it is a little bit of the way we approach customers now. Uh, it, we we try to create that partnership and not have force a software, you know, to them. And and so you, you kind of taught us that that's the most effective way, and that's how we handle it now. So that was great. What was your background? Because you, you know, dealing with these uh, different personalities at all the locations, you kind of adapted to their style, and you you seem to to understand what their pain points were when you were talking to them. So what what's your background? before you were in that position where you were managing all these locations and what led you there? Um, I was a small business owner for, for quite a number of years, probably till my early forties. And then after that, I, I went into the nonprofit sector and I was working with a lot of volunteers and I was actually overseeing a, a camp in the Vancouver area, which is a camp, like a kid's camp that was, um, that was located just outside of Vancouver. And I had to deal with hundreds of volunteers. Um, and, um, so it gave me, I, I realized that uh, working with volunteers is quite a bit different than being a business owner because you have employees. And then all of a sudden, when an employee does something wrong, you kind of get on them and, you know. But working with volunteers, you have to smile and you and they've done something wrong and you got to thank them. And then later on, you got to go and fix it. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's, it's much different because they're giving up their time. They're giving up of everything. So I learned how to work with a lot of different people. So when I started working in uh, more of the seniors end of things and working with so many different sites, I knew that I was going to be working with many different types of people that have different types of things to bring to the table. Some were good at this, some were not good at this. And some in that in this scenario, some were not good at using computers. So, um, you know, it, but I found that's part of the reason that we went to maintenance care too. Because once I realized it was just a drop-down form and um, it could be done very easily, I thought, okay, these guys are not going to have a problem with this. It wasn't some really deep thing. And we just wanted them to, to learn how to do the day-to-day, -day, not adding all these things. You know, we tried to do that more at head office and plug in a lot of the things. And you guys supported us with that too. Every time we went onto a site, you guys loaded up everything that was on the site. And I, that was much appreciated too. I didn't realize that was going to happen at the beginning because I was kind of like going, like, oh, 
how are we going to get all this inventory and stuff like that on there? So that was a big plus for us too. So yeah. yeah. And, and then we didn't have to lock into anything. So I didn't think we could really lose because we didn't have to lock into some huge contract that if I made a mistake with this, that it was going to be a problem that I couldn't get out of or anything like that, which happens a lot in this industry. You get locked in and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, this isn't working. So I really appreciated that too. And you were what, like, I guess, director of facilities was kind of the, the title that you had uh, at the time. Yeah. Director of maintenance. Yeah. Director facilities of maintenance. And, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. And so like you negotiated a lot, you said about being locked into contracts. I remember you told me some stories about different things where you were able to save the company money in different ways, just for different uh, types of contracts. I think there was stuff related to garbage or things like that. Like, do you have any of those types of, of stories where you uh, managed to look at a big picture because you were a larger organization and then turn that into some savings for that company in that position? Yeah, I think there was a I think there was a large growth spurt you know, with the organization just sort of when I was coming in, and um, that was sort of my thing. With the the nonprofit I worked for before, I took a dollar and I had to turn it into ten. So I I, I had a little bit of that in me to want to save money, and I started looking through the contracts at all the sites and trying to consolidate everything so that we could you know get better buying power, but also so we could save money. Yeah, no, for sure. Some of those types of garbage contracts are really difficult for for organizations because once you're locked into that, it it's almost seems like you're, you know, you're, you're taking that to your death almost. It's it's like they're so hard to get out of. But we found a good partner, and I think that's key to a lot of things that everybody does. And you, you got to find out a company that you trust. I think that's what you're doing all the time in any negotiations is finding a partner that you can trust and that you can work with. And that's kind of what happened even in, in that in, in that uh, negotiation with the garbage contracts. And we actually had to pay some 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 of the companies that were we were um, using, we had to pay them out like tens of thousands of dollars to go away. But but what ended up happening is is the company that we were negotiating with, because they'd already had a large portion of our portfolio, we're gonna do garbage they did garbage some of them for nine months for free just to pay back the monies that we paid out. So um, then at the beginning of the next budget year, we went with the new, we started paying, you know, in some cases we were paying like $1,500 a month less than we were with the, with the other organizations. So um, sometimes you have to eat a little bit to, to get the bigger savings. And yeah, you, you know what? I, I didn't know anything about it. That was a months long negotiations too. I had to learn about stuff like that. Um, but there was other things uh, that I learned for sure. They're, you know, you're always trying to do the best for the company that you work for. And that sort of gives me a bit, gave me a bit of pride in my job is to be able to save um, in whatever areas that I could. So yeah, it was fun. I, I enjoyed negotiations. Yeah. I know one of the things we always joke around is just the ideas that you have <laughs> about different things. Um, we, I, I think there was a toothpaste <laughs> dispenser um, <laughs> idea, which I, from what I remember, th this, this toothpaste dispenser idea was, um, you put, what was it? You put toothpaste in a tube upside down. Um, you take, you stick it on the wall. You take your toothbrush, you put it in and it just squirts the right amount of toothpaste for your toothbrush. And then you can brush your teeth and it just kind of uses itself up all day. And you had this idea. And I remember that we actually found this device somewhere at like a dollar store here. And I sent it over to you and I just thought that was hilarious. Um, but, uh, what other ideas have you had, like, you know, whether it's in business or even personal, like you're always innovating and being that you were an entrepreneur, I think kind of helps. It's that mindset that you're always trying to create new things. Um, what else have you thought of that you've done, even fun stuff? Um, wow. Right off the cuff. Um, Too many. I, yeah, I'm thinking all the time. Some of it's crazy, this and that. Like we were talking earlier about glasses. I'm always thinking about how can we change that we both wear glasses and you're always losing them so I've, I've been thinking about that lately a lot when i think about um when i think about maintenance and different things like that what ended up happening really early on in my in my career with that when i was working with, with this company is is um it had to do with repiping it was a large building it had to get repiped the water pipes were starting to leak and we got some bad pipe in that building and um that was a, a big win for me. I was about two or three months with the company and uh, I was I was going out to look at this job. I didn't really fully understand it. I knew how water lines worked in a you know in, in homes, but in a in, in a high rise I wasn't a hundred percent sure. So we went and looked at it and I got some ideas in my head. Um, and I said to my boss, I said, 
what about this, this, and this? And I think, um, I don't think neither one of us was 100% sure if any of this would work. And all he said to me was, send an email and see what the guy says. And I thought, okay, well, either he's going to think I'm a knucklehead or whatever. But the quote we got was 300000 And by the time the idea that I sent to him, a non-plumber type of person sending him this crazy idea, three weeks later, we got a quote back that only cost us a 99000 He used the idea that we had to, to do that. So that was kind of a win, uh, just of looking at something a little bit differently, maybe not conventional, but it worked. Now, I always say to people, when you think outside the box, you know, maybe one out of 10 ideas will work, so don't get discouraged and just continue trying. I loved our toothpaste thing. I love that you sent me that thing after we had the idea. I had that thing on my mirror for about six months, and I just pushed that toothbrush in there every time we pulled it out. Perfect amount of toothpaste. It was perfect. I love that thing. So that, <laughs> so that plumbing thing was, uh, you just like you re redid the plumbing schematic, like kind of a different way of laying out the plumbing? Like, was it... What, what well, it was, was it all, that you? It, it was all leaking, so um, so so we had to pull all the all all the stuff out, and at the end we ended up not pulling as much out because there was some existing holes from some from some other things that were in that building because it was an older building, okay. and instead of re-drilling, instead of doing all these things, we ended up using some holes that were already there. Um, they were fire cap, but we could get we could work around all that, and we ended up not so not pulling out all the old stuff, saved us money. Not getting rid of it saved us money, and also not having to re re drill everything and on on all the floors through concrete, that saved us money. So it, it just little wow. things like that added up. Um, and um, I didn't know again, like, like I didn't even know which way the plumbing was laid out before I physically looked at it. I'm a more of a let me see it instead of just sitting in office talking about it. I wasn't really sure what we were talking about, but when I saw it, it worked out. So yeah. yeah. Like I was going to say, you had to you had to go quite in depth, I guess, to, like, did you look at schematics? You went on site? Yeah. Like, how often did you get to that level of detail where you had to, like, dive into something to solve that problem? As opposed to kind of, you know, sometimes people think as a, you know, director of facilities or maintenance, you're just staying on top of things but not really getting into the details. Like, you had to really dig into that to find out, you know, how to solve that. And how often did you have to do that? I would say that that was probably some of the biggest part parts of the job because, um, again, maintenance care took a lot, took care of a lot of the little stuff, communication, um, the things that were happening on a site. I did not even phone my guys and say, look at, look at what was going on. Oh, this site's, you know, doing okay today. It's like, oh, this guy's overwhelmed. He may not be phoning me because he's trying to do it himself. But I could phone him and say, hey, I, I noticed that we got a lot going on. Do we need to support that somehow or do we need to do that? But when that when that was taken off off the, off the table, a lot of that stuff, um, that's when I had time. And I, you know, I traveled to the sites more than probably anybody else did um, because that was my ongoing thing, to support the guys, support the guys. And so I could actually take some time and look at those bigger projects because, like I said, just talking on the phone is not the best support to the guys all the time. You know, you didn't really understand, oh, why is this going to cost 30 grand all of a sudden? And it, you could go in and not just support them, but also support the negotiation with the contractor that's coming in to fix something and ask them, you know, questions face to face. Like, why are you charging this for this when this is already in place? And some of the guys were great maintenance guys. I mean, all of them really were. They all had their real talents as far as that goes. But not all of them knew how to negotiate, so they're just like, I just want to fix, fix it, you know. Yeah. And they didn't have time to, to do those things. So it was, I think it was a big plus to be on site to support them that way. And I used to always say to people, who say to me, well, what do you do in your position? I said, you know what? I says, if everything's going well, my biggest job is to make sure the guys are taken out for breakfast every time I go there. So uh, it, you know, if if things are going smooth, you you go you, you you congratulate them, you talk with them, you encourage them, and you do that stuff. So being on site, whether it's you got to go there for a big negotiation or whether you go there for just encouraging them, I think it's important, and especially in a larger organization. Yeah, you had a lot of um, territory to cover, right? It was like there were they weren't uh, all geographically close to each other, so that that was taking up a lot of your time and somewhere on the island so you had to get on the ferry and and that's a that's a process in itself so yeah it's yeah. Uh, victoria vancouver Kelowna, and then two sites in the in the um in the interior so yeah it, it was 
but I enjoy I enjoyed it. I enjoyed just going, and you know, it, it was a joy of mine. I I rather do that than sit around in an office all day. So yeah, it was good. In your experience now, um, looking back on those days, like what's some of the can you think of anything that was kind of just that stands out as such a uh, maybe a weird moment or something like kind of unique that people would want to hear about? Like, I can't, you know, this happened, you know, and you don't have to be specific and tell names, but is there anything that's ever happened that's kind of funny or, you know, in, in your in your dealings with, uh, you know, with people? I can tell you one while you're thinking. One is actually when I came and visited you, <laughs> one of the sites, we were training one of your sites and uh, one of your maintenance people, uh, you know, as I was training them, they put in as a joke, a maintenance request about the toilet being plugged with pickles. And, uh, and that was kind of a funny thing. And so everybody's laughed that was in the room. <laughs> to this day, I still use that task in maintenance care when I do demos and, and go, oh, if you go back in time to 2010, you can, and you put in the word pickle, you can search. And that's what that task comes up. So to this day, I still use that task from that maintenance person that put that in. So I always find that funny. We're heading back from Kelowna back to Vancouver. And, um, we're, we were in a little bit of a hurry. I was kind of pushing it and, um, in my truck and, uh, all of a sudden we came around the corner and two deer jumped out in front of us. And all I had time to say to Dale was hang on and it hit right there. And then, oh my goodness, it was crazy. We, when, by the time we ended up stopping, it was a mess behind us and, uh, and the, um, the front bumper had pushed into the, into the right front tire and it was rubbing on it. And, uh, well, we're maintenance guys, right? We tied a big rope to a tree. We tied it to the bumper. We pulled it out. No problem. Away we go. So it was, it, it was fine. It wasn't fine for the deer, but it, we, we got home fine. And yeah, it was the relationship exactly. part of the job that I enjoyed the, the most, like just with the guys working, being on sites. I, I like that. I like that really the most out of we'll, we'll the things it. that I did. And there was always a joke. There was always something here, something there that was going on. And I think that's what you have. That's the kind of mindset you have to do in this kind of a job. You, you have to be able to one figure things out. You got to be able to laugh. If you, if you don't, it, you, you're not going to get through your days because there is always something to do. And then you have a big responsibility. A lot of people will say, well, you know, what do those guys do? It's a huge responsibility. When you got buildings full of people, if it's cold outside, you have no heat. If it's too hot outside and you don't have air conditioning, or you don't have water, or you don't have these things. A lot of these people are vulnerable. They they need these things to survive. So, um, you know, I've always I've I've always said to those guys that you know you, you guys play a huge role, and um, but we 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 got to get through it together, <laughs> laughing. No, that's all right. You know, you said it well, and I think we can end on that note. Is that you know maintenance is always under appreciated. I think uh, most times their offices are in the basement of the building. And, um, you know, people ignore them until they need them, but they really don't, you know, they don't make them part of the executive team. They don't make them part of, you know, like the, the important group of people that should be uh, put as important. And I think that that's a really good way to, to end this segment and say, you know, thank you very much. Good talking to you again. And uh, maybe we'll do this again sometime in, in the future. Good talking to you, Daniel.